only fans on and popping, aren't you? <laughs> Trying to. So look. So so listen. So listen. So at in that therapy, I'm like the fly on the wall in their therapy session, and and it it kind of switched my my fandom of the claim was like, okay, well, maybe I need to put my energy over here to the to the gun club because they're like, you stole my daddy. You stole our daddy. It's like th- just the way that that whole presentation of that um, interview or whatever you want to call it, video package, I actually became more, um, I had empathized more for the gun club. So leading up to last night when, again, they got the main event spot, even after the trios match um, that they had announced, I'm like, okay, so like you said, something big had to happen. I'm like, they're going to win meaning that the um, Amaz Boys the Gun Club was going to win. So I'm happy. I liked it. I thought it felt right. I thought it felt natural and right. But I okay. think I might be in the minority on that. Well, you're not in the minority because I thought it was good. Take it away, Ishan. Uh, so, you know, I'm a big Claims fan. Like, I've been talking about the claim for a while. You know, I, I, I thought they were in the top 10 tag teams of the year. You guys thought opposite. No, you no, you, no, you were like top three. Don't do that. Okay. You, you, yeah, you put them over the Usos way. almost. <laughs> sure did. Oh, God. You put them over everybody. Number, Usos are number one. <laughs> Usos number one. Go back and listen um, to that episode. Episode you guys three-ish. It's like three-ish. Episode yep. three-ish. Please <laughs> do. These, these guys, I don't know what they was on during that thing. But, uh, yeah. Um, and I, I like the I like the ass boys. I, I like the nickname. I, I like I like them. I, I love I love their gear um, from the moment they debuted, like the Shawn Michaels 90s themed gear. I thought it was great. They came out on the show because like and, and I love how like so you look at them. Um, I think Colton had on the Shawn Michaels like top and then Austin had on the chaps. Right. So they kind of both had on a piece of the gear. I thought that looked phenomenal. I think for me, I thought the gear looked phenomenal. Um, I really enjoy them. I just, I don't think that they did a good job of building them up as a legit title champions. Like they don't, like there's, they don't, they don't seem threatening. Like I, like I think of other teams. Like I feel like they can lose to anybody, and not in a good way. Because sometimes you want to have vulnerable champions. They just mm-hmm. didn't build build them up as credible contenders or build them up as credible champions in my opinion like so i that's why i was just surprised i like the team i just don't think they've done a good job of building that team up to make them seem like they're are serious champions to me valid contenders um, yeah it, it, it's they just you know like i feel like they like they can lose any moment like right um as far as the the interview segment from the previous week um i totally agree with you rhodesia um they seem more sympathetic yeah. Um, that segment I thought, the, that second, I thought the they were going to do a double turn. I you did, because that's, like, that's where they were going, yeah, right? I did. I, I, and for a split second, I'm like, is this like a double turn? Because how can you boo somebody who said right. my dad wasn't <laughs> there for me? And then the claim was they, their replies were so asshole-like, right? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It was your fault that like, you lost your daddy. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> but he, but to, honestly, to me, I feel like that's just bad, more bad storytelling on their part because after that, the ass boys are back acting like heels and, you know, the claim are back acting like baby faces. So like, I feel like they just, you know, that company has an identity crisis as far as how they present their characters. Um, I wasn't opposed to it. It's just I, I didn't think it was that great. To be honest with you, like, just for those very reasons, I don't think they did a, gr- a good job of building that team to make you think they're credible champions or contenders. Um, I don't think they've done a great job with the overall story. I think they, again, they're confusing the audience again. Like, you know, when I got somebody watching AEW for the first time, I think it would be hard for them to tell who they're supposed to root for by watching those couple of different segments. And I think that's a miss right there. Um, I think the only win is that you got two entertaining cha- uh, champions. I mean, uh, tag teams. I think the acclaim, super entertaining, top tag team in the business. I think the guns are super underrated. Um, I just didn't think they were ready for a championship. But, hey, I'm looking forward to see where it goes. You know, and I, that's why I said I think it worked. There was a uproar on social media last night. And look at the crowd. The crowd shots were oh, fantastic. Yes. And, hey, <laughs> I was on leave. here on my soapbox last week screaming to AEW, please slow down. Unfortunately, we had an injury last night with Bunny, so hopefully she's good. I don't think we've heard yet from her in her match uh, with Jamie last night where they had to go to the finish early. So they had about two minutes left at the end of the show that was not accounted for, and you let that moment breathe. We got the shots of the crowd in disbelief. We got the shots of acclaimed stun selling 
in the ring and then Billy Gunn helping him up. And we get the shot of them walking away with the titles, the gun club. That's all I asked for. Um, no, we, I don't want somebody to get injured to get it. But everything does not have to end at 9.59 and 50 seconds Eastern time every single week. Let these things breathe so we can you know, actually take in what we just saw. And I thought we had that last night. But I go on social media and there were so many people who were upset. And I'm like, it worked. Because now you go rematch just that kind of what he kind of talked about in terms of they're not ready. Why would you take the belts off of uh, the acclaim? They're hot as fish grease. Like, what are we doing here? But I think it worked because if you're able to play hot potato with the TNT title, and that's okay because the matches are good, what's the difference with this? You got Revolution coming up here in a few weeks. There was no major tag team storyline. We have one now. Mm -hmm. Either you go rematch – and you put the belts back on the acclaim, or you bring FTR back, they still have a beef with the gun club. And maybe mm -hmm. FTR gets the belts. But now there is something, there's some sizzle behind the tag team division that was not there 24, 48 hours ago. So I thought it worked. I, I thought it was really, really good. Um, I also thought that MJF and Takeshita humped last night. That match was two thumbs up. You know, whatever you, know, you want to say with that. I'm very critical, as you know, um, and for the people who are listening, I'm very critical of MJF's wrestling in ring work. Um, he hmm. kind of made me eat my words like yeah, last night. Like it, him and Takeshna, and again, you get someone like Takeshna who is, I feel, is just so so fundamentally sound, and he's still learning. Um, you would think that he's been wrestling in the United States for years. Um, just how him and MJF put on last night. But, yeah, MJF made me eat my words in the first part of the night. We're going to talk about his interview backstage in a second. But his match itself, wow. You, you don't like MJF's ring work? Uh, no, I don't. Hmm. But I guess he has. Because she's a hater. That it's she's a hater. That's why. That's the only reason why. He doesn't have any hater. holes in his game. So if you were to ask no. her, like, hey, break down to me. What don't you like about Radizia's going to be like, uh, I just don't like the way he, he wrestles. I'm not. Well, I don't him. sound like that for starters. <laughs> so make sure my voice sounds. And it's going to start coughing again because the universe is trying to tell her to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> that was so messed um, up. Like, but no, I'll tell you what though, Takeshita, man, they got a star there. Treat him as such. Yeah. I don't, I don't yep. want to see him in any more meaningful matches where he's not winning. Right. Treat him right. Because yep. they, they have something special with him. But, uh, but yeah, I, I thought that match was really, really good. What else did I think? Um, so, I know y'all so, talked about this already, too. I don't mean to cut you mm -hmm. off there, but um, y'all were talking about y'all being more of Sean talking about knowing the end game, and I don't really care for the story if I already know the end game. But, man, that Brian Danielson and Roosh match. Ooh. Oh, my god. Ooh. But that's how I felt after all his matches he's had in this lead up to Man. to MJF. But la last night, Dynamites between Roosh and Brian Ooh. Danielson, that was epic. And you know when I went on the Twitter for a little bit trying to navigate it, that's all you kind of saw was match of the year, match of the year, match of the year. Like it was wonderful. So for me to already know that we're going to see Daniel Bryan and MJF, I already kind of am having high standards, and for them to still show out. Oh man, like that makes me feel even better about it. That match was <laughs> they killed it. They did. I, I still had to catch an MJF as my favorite match of the night, I think. But that was that was one of the more violent matches we've seen on like TV in a and long he was time. Gushing. He was gushing out. Yeah, like they they man, they went for it. That that was and once again, we talk about it every single week. Brian's going to find a way to have a different style of match mm -hmm. with his opponent. And that one I thought was fantastic. So now we do know it is going to be the 60-man or 60-man, sheesh, 60-minute uh, Ironman match at the pay-per-view with Brian against MJF. But, um, Ishan, I know you saw that match, right? You watched all the Dynamite, didn't you? I did. What, did, what was your thoughts about the match? Now, I've been laying out on this one because I honestly didn't like this show nearly as much as you guys did. Wow. I, I would say I would say I would give the show a seven. I gave last week a seven. I mean, it's good. 
I gotta be honest with you. So like after after watching, you know, SmackDown, and then I, I watch NXT, PLE, then I watch Raw, and then I watch a little bit of NXT. Um, I get kind of my feel of wrestling because like for me, I'm a character. I get I'm a character driven. Like I'm not. I don't like just matches. So like you but know, but you like, do. Just, I am going to stop no, you right no, no. there, and I'm going to let you finish. But you do. For yeah. the longest, you used to tell me every single week, man, it's wrestling. I can just watch wrestling. I, I can just watch the matches. I used to tell you, if I'm not emotionally invested, I don't care. You're like, man, I just like watching wrestling. So that no, 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 is that's, fundamentally that's, that's, incorrect, sir. That's, that's true. A seven isn't a bad score to me. Like, a seven is enter- it's entertaining. I, I like watching wrestling. Like, for instance, like, I have a hard time watching Impact. I keep giving Impact a chance at the chance. I just it's that's not a seven to me. I, it's not entertaining to me. I think AEW are perfectly entertaining shows. Okay. It's just that I have a value on character and storyline, and I get that feel well before I get to AEW. And so to sit back and watch these matches, a, a Roosh and a Brian Danielson match, and I know at the end that Roosh has no chance of winning, no matter what he does. I, I'm not engaged in any of the false finishes. Right, so when I'm watching wrestling, and it's just wrestling. It's still an element of a little bit of surprise. I, I, I have an inkling of who's going to win and who probably will win and won't win, but I don't know for sure, right? It's not, it might be that 5% chance, that 2%. Like when, I, when I watch that match, I know there's a 100% chance that Roosh is, take, is taking that pin. I know, I know he's going to tap out. I know it's going to be one, two, three. I, it's just a matter of how, right? So I'm not fully engaged in specifically anything that happens in the match because it's like I already know. You know so it's, like, it's, like, the, it's like why? Cause, could it be because you are going into it not caring that that's the reason why you can't appreciate exactly the what great it is. match? Yeah, that's exactly okay. what it is. Um, and uh, you know, and and then it's like, uh, it's just I don't get a hundred percent what I need from the story aspect. Like, it's just a lot of if you if you just want to watch, you know, great matches, that's what you're gonna watch on AEW. There's nothing wrong with that, but for me, that's not gonna make it a a level ten for me if it's just good matches especially when I'm getting kind of what I want from other shows. In the past, I wasn't. Like, right, I, I didn't like WWE programming. I couldn't stand to watch it, right? So I had to get everything I needed from AEW. Um, now, I mean, I'm getting kind of more of the style of wrestling I want from other shows. It's kind of hard for me to sit and say that these shows are like tens. It's entertaining. If you like good wrestling, watch AEW. I highly recommend anybody to watch it. It's just for me, I can't sit and gush over these shows when it's, I know it's just good wrestling, there's going to be holes in their storylines, it's going to be inconsistent storytelling. It's just hard for me to sit there and, and say those, these are some of the best shows I've ever seen when it's just not there for me. So that's funny, Ben. Then you have completely done a 180 on this because I remember when Triple H took over Head of Creative, I sent you a text and said, AEW may have some issues on their hands. And you were like, you really think so? And I kind of actually articulated just what you are saying right now but now you are, you've are you turned to that fan. I said, if Triple H gives us, as a wrestling community, what we want from WWE in terms of stories, they're going to have the better production. We already know that. They're going to have the smoother, all you know, whatever you want to kind of say in terms of you know, star power and all that. You're going to get that from WWE. But if Triple H can get the talent on board, we're coming to the company, and they can get everything else that we're looking for, that is who AEW is going after. That was their fan base. So just to hear you kind of say that now, but I still want to call a little bit of BS because if that was the case, you would have hated Roman versus KO at the Rumble, which you said that match was great. You would not be looking forward to Sammy and Roman, and you just said earlier in the show, like, I'm going to let it play out to see kind of why they, they take us on. But you know Sammy has 0% chance of winning next Saturday on, on the pay-per-view. See, so, I'm not going to give him a zero, though. I'm not going to give him a zero. I'm, I'm going to give him it's a five. Hey, that little, I'll hang on to those little percents. That's how, that's how wrestling is. If you think about it, if you watch any wrestling, for the most part, you, you could kind of predict who's going to win and lose, especially if you've been watching wrestling for as long as we have. We kind of, mm-hmm. you, you, you kind of know. You kind of know, right? But it's that chance that you're wrong. Right, and that's 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 everything. Especially if the story kind of at least gives you that 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 suspension of disbelief. That kind of gives you that kind of that kind of that kind of uh, thinking in the back of your mm-hmm. head, like, hey, you know what? He maybe he can lose this one. Maybe 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 he maybe he can't win, right? But you know, with these trials of Jericho matches that we these recycled stories we've been getting 
you know, every 90 days with AEW to where someone has to win eight matches before they get the, the match they want. And you know at but, the end who's, what's going to happen. Like, it's no it's zero shit chance. The, the the gauntlet match or whatever it was, um, Garcia lost. Well, not Garcia, I'm sorry. Um, Ricky Starks lost. I, I didn't think that. So we got a surprise. And even with the um, Brian Danielson and Roosh, I thought it was going to be a count out when they barricaded very, that very door. Very valid point. But, you know, here's the deal. <laughs> here's the honest goodness truth. I love Ricky, but I don't care about this storyline. Yes. It's, it's, it's I Jericho, I think. that It's just too much you of think? it. It's too much, it's no. too much of it. Because it, it doesn't like we why why does he have to go through it does whatever yeah. we, he already beat him and that's that's yeah. that's hard for me to talk about and I, I love yeah. Ricky yeah we talked about that um last thing I had was I just want to give kudos to Ar Fox so happy to be able to see him shine on a national mm-hmm. level and that six man they humped in that one too I mean. Yep. I know he said he just can't watch matches for matches. I am that person that can't really watch matches for matches also. But that show I thought was really, really strong. Even that six man, we knew that top flight era Fox wasn't going to win. But it was a really close false finish with AR and, and Omega right in the middle with a reverse yeah. from the one wing angle jet, one wing angel that I thought was just awesome. That match was was fantastic as well. And cool. I actually like that. That's guys. my match tonight. Yeah, kudos okay. to the rest of the guys, the other five, who who gave AR his shining moment. Like, he, he he had a great showing last night. He did. On Dynamite. I was really happy about that. And Kenny's been good about that, too. Um, He'll he'll put somebody over. Um, But, yeah, I was I really like that trio's match. Yeah, absolutely. My only, my only uh, negative is we got to pull back a little bit on the blood. And now I it's becoming – it, it's, week. it's not even a, a thing anymore where you're like, oh, man, he got busted open. Now it's just mm-hmm. it's becoming par for the course. And I love blood in wrestling when it makes sense. I don't think you should have a cage match without blood. I think that's ridiculous. <laughs> even watching Grayson Waller and Braun, I'm just like, man, this match would be so much better if we had some blood. But it's 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 a lot. It, it's a it's a lot. Like, so I, I wish maybe they would maybe have a mandate of I don't even, I don't even want to see it weekly. But when we do see it, I wish it was reserved for, like, one match on the card. And it made sense for it. Like, I don't need to yeah. see you bust it open just from, a, like, a, I don't know. But it's, 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 it's a lot. It's just now you're, we're desensitized to it. So yep. it, it doesn't have the same effect. Yep. And Unless see, you're why, gushing. And that's why in the, 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 the Roosh and, and, and Danielson match, I'm like, okay. Like, everybody, get, everybody getting busted open up in that mug. He like, was gushing, too, though. Yeah, it's, that thing it's, was. It's Ooh. like I said. Like I don't say. Like it's still a good show. Like I said, for me, like a seven is still a good show. It's still entertaining. I'm still gonna keep watching. You know, every week it's just that man. Like, but you no, know, hey, shots to Ar Fox though, man. He looked damn good. They yep. gave him. They let him shine in there, right? Mm-hmm. It, I just wish he get some new uh, ring gear, man. I, I don't know why all three of them had to have that. Man, <laughs> he's been like, rocking that. that there. He's been rocking that forever. Then oh, he he no. be wearing that. Let that man be. And then Top Gun had to wear it too. I mean, goodness. There you go again. Tom Cruise was not on Dynamite <laughs> yesterday, man. All right. He was not on Dynamite. I think he was watching NXT on Wednesdays too. To see. <laughs> that is ridiculous, man. Both of y'all, we got to go. We got to get out of here. Um, so, Super Bowl, we're not doing any bets because we know somebody's not going to play along. Asia. Okay, but I do want to get you guys a Super Bowl picks for this Sunday. We got the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles. Radija, I'll start with you. Who you got winning? I'm going with Patrick Mahomes. But, I, but hey, I say one thing. I am so happy we have two black quarterbacks in the Super Bowl. I have to say that. Black History Month. Black History Month. Some, hey, Shout out to one, one of the old ex-NFL players came out last week and said the NFL is rigged, and they get scripts at the beginning of – uh, each season, and they work on the scripts in uh, the practices throughout the week. So if you want to believe that, then that is why we have two black quarterbacks, because it is Black History Month. And somebody also leaked the script for the Super Bowl, and they have Philadelphia Eagles winning. Wow. I'm still going with Patrick Mahomes. If I place the bet, it's probably going to be for the Chiefs to win. CTE is a mofo, mad. boy. Mm-hmm. All right, so you got oh. the Chiefs. Two black quarterbacks. That's awesome. I'm gonna actually watch mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Who you going? Uh, with? You going the Cowboys? Who's the favorites? <laughs> he go. 
Man, it's, it's almost like a pick'em. Yeah. Um, the Eagles were like a point and a half favorite at the beginning because Mahomes was out hurt or he was he hurt his ankle, had a high ankle sprain. He's going to play 100%. They do have some injuries, but as of right now, the line is still one and a half for the Eagles. For, for the Eagles, okay. And they're in Arizona, right? Yep. That's closer to Kansas City. I'm What's your record against Kansas City? Other? They have not played because they're in different divisions. So okay, uh, so I'm Philly going was the okay. So then you go in Philly. You go in Philly Eagles. But remember, last time you trying to go in Philly twice. So you just keep it going. Three times a time. You went Dallas a few times too, and yeah, <laughs> you went Jacksonville. Kiss up Tony Khan, but you just talked about how he <laughs> Tony not like come on show our show. Anymore. He's Tony, not coming on, on after you went on right, exactly. that ridiculous. <laughs> hey, I'm not. I'm telling everybody to watch it, but I just can't watch it. Everybody watch <laughs> AEW. <laughs> Tony, come on our show. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going with um, the Chiefs. I, I do not go against Mahomes until he loses. So I am going Chiefs. So I got the Chiefs. Rhodesia has the Chiefs. Eshan is going with the Eagles. So it well, we should be a fun win. game. Yep, should be a fun game on Sunday. Hopefully you guys all have your Super Bowl plans and you guys have a good time. All right, TFW moment of the week. Rhodesia hit that jingle. TFW, moment of the week. Boom. Oh. So mine is going to be me acknowledging Paul Heyman on Twitter and then Paul Heyman acknowledging me back on Twitter. So it had to do with, of course, the promo segment from Monday. I was having correspondence with somebody, and he basically just said, hey, I didn't think I would be invested. They got me in, like, kudos to them. And my response, and I added Paul Heyman, I said, uh, Heyman is unreal with what he can do with one, just one promo. Every year that goes by, he cements his legacy more and more with being the best talker in the history of the business. Paul Heyman then retweeted that and stated, do you think Roman Reigns would have anyone less than the absolute undisputed GOAT as his wise man? Hashtag we the ones. So wanted to give, of course, Heyman flowers. I'm glad he saw that. But we talked about it earlier. That man is nothing that he cannot do verbally. He can get you to laugh. He can get you to be mad. He can get you to be emotional. It was, we talked about it earlier, but I just thought that was just a fantastic piece of business. So that is my TFW moment of the week. Rhodesia, what is yours? And you skipped past, I'm sure I know yours, and I was waiting for you to bring it up earlier. So I guess you're just waiting to use it all right now, but your TFW moment of the week. Mine's is a toss. Up. Well, mine's, I have one. It's, me being able to see Lita again in the ring, well, at, you know, ringside. Um, I was able to see Lita. Um, I was kind of half asleep, so I was pulling the Ishan, and then I heard a doom, 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 doom. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, oh, oh, my God. Oh, wait, hold on, wait, that's Lita. So being able to see did, Lita. Did you hear that, or did I wake you up? I don't know, actually. So I just remember <laughs> as my eyes was opening up, I was like, wait, hold on, what's happening right now? Like, <laughs> what's going on? And being able to see her come back again, my favorite wrestler. Um, I want to tell this one quick story, but before I tell that quick story, I have to mention, I believe it was this last week, um, Beth Phoenix, um, I forgot what you call it, like the the arm bar on Dominic up in the air. I don't even know what you call it. It's like usually you drop in, it's like a, a boob buster or a face buster, but the move that she put on him, it was like an iconic picture that was taken. Glam slam. Glam yep. slam. There we go. Thank you. Amazing. But um, being able to see Lita, she is my favorite wrestler. Um, we back in, I think it was 2013 at WrestleMania, um, we were at fan access and we were standing in line for the wrestlers. And when it was our turn in line, the p people that was there, they ended and then they left. I'm like, Oh shoot. We're not even going to go see them. Oh, that sucks. Like really bad. I started getting all whiny. And then all of a sudden Lita shows up. She wasn't even advertised to be one of the people that was there, and we were the first ones to be able to see her. And, of course, I was just, like, shocked as all get out. But, my goodness, I, I love Lita and being able to see her still looking as good as she is in her red hair. You know, she was that sexy tomboy. And, you know, to me, coming up when I first got into wrestling myself in 98, 99, I saw that. And no, she wasn't a black woman, but she was like this tomboy. And I kind of identified like that when I was younger. And it was really good to, you know, to have someone that I could follow throughout her career and seeing her, you know, show back up. I was really happy. And that was exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, And also, shouts out to 2K 
uh, in WWE 2K23, Lita and the Glamazon will be featured <laughs> in that uh, game. So, good stuff. I'm going to get back into um, so, to playing that so I can play against you, Ishan. You should, absolutely. We can do like some uh, intergender tag matches. Sounds um, good. Man. War games. War games. games. So, my moment of the week is simply Bianca Belair in her outfit. <laughs> Explain, please. I cannot. Uh, if if you saw it, to this. if you saw it, you don't need to explain it. I think it's we all you, saw you know, it. If you know, you know. Yep, just go back and watch when she comes out to put over all the other women. There's a fantastic cram- camera shot of Bianca in the aisleway. Mm. Mm. Golly. Why do I do this? What a you? way to end episode 20. Of the TFW podcast. We talked about it earlier. Full episodes are on YouTube. Check us out over there at That's Freaking Wrestling. We are on Twitter. If you are not following us by now, I don't know what you are waiting for. At That's FNW. Hit us up over there. And as we always say, please follow the podcast. Leave us five-star review and a comment that does help us in the rankings on all of the podcast platforms. Once again, thank you guys for listening. We will talk to you next week.